The raid on your motherboard is a mess, and you should avoid using it like the plague. I'm complaining, and uh, it's not just to be complaining, it's not just to get clicks, it's not the clickbait. I'm complaining from a place of love, because we can't fix the issues if we don't identify the issues, right? But if you're thinking about raid to make your computer go brrrr, stick with me, because I've got a lot of hard-won experience I want to talk about, and if you're going to do it, you can, but there's some stuff you should know. Having a multi-disc setup for your main OS drive can be amazing and glorious. I love it but I don't recommend it. And I'll explain in uh, a relatively excruciating ramble. That's why you come to level one, right? The rambles. But hopefully you'll take away a deeper understanding so that you can make better decisions about your own rate stuff. All right, RAID. You get a bunch of hard drives, it's faster. It's just like putting in more memory channels, right? The more memory channels, the better. You just plug it in and it goes. So that's how it works. Oh, sweet summer child, that's not how it is at all. Uh, first, some background. Let's talk about RAID and how it actually works. RAID is something that seems like you might want on a performance computer. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, or disks has been replaced with drives because an NVMe disk is not a drive. An NVMe drive is not a disk. Solid state is a lot more common now, in other words. You take more than one storage device and combine it somehow and get either the performance boost of multiple drives or some kind of resiliency. So if you've got multiple SSDs, one of them fails, it doesn't matter. And doing that is way harder than just adding another stick of memory. You can't just plug in another hard drive and expect it to work. But even Apple, Apple is getting in on this too because using two SSDs in some of their Mac Pros, and that's a basically a RAID 0 configuration. There's no redundancy at all. It's purely for performance because they recognize that I.O. can be a bottleneck on a modern, you know, mid-tier and higher computer. And that's something you might want, right? You know, stripe together a bunch of these. Yeah, there's a little bit of risk in that. If one of them dies, you lose everything, but maybe that's pretty good. There are all, there's some pretty big pitfalls, and I don't think you should do RAID without understanding what problem it is you're trying to solve. Because when you talk about performance, it's not just the raw throughput, it's also the latency. And by default, you should never use the RAID on your motherboard. Ever. Never. Except in some very specific circumstances. It's a mess, and probably not worth your time and headache to try to fool with it. Is that universally true? That's an AMD system you got before you, but what about Intel? <laughs> Behold, the Intel VROC system. This is the ultimate Intel VROC system. It's a W3175X, you know, yeah, I heard you. What about VROC, you say? You're talking about all this RAID stuff on the Intel platform. This is the EVGA SR3 Dark, the primo of the primo motherboards. 28 core monster Xeon 3175X. It's the highest end desktop platform that Intel has right now. I saw this processor on stage at Computex in 2018 hitting five gigahertz on all 28 cores with a one horsepower chiller. But yeah, this is the only system where VROC has worked completely as advertised. And it came really, really late in the cycle for these processors. I dumped a vast black hole of time trying to get Intel VROC to work on the X299 platform with a 7980XE. And I struggled and I wasn't the only one. Even when it did work, the performance was really pretty hit and miss. Now, Intel VROC has some real hardware and software engineering behind it. The engineering is actually pretty good. I can create a VROC volume on this machine in the BIOS, and whether I install Windows or Linux, the OS will see that volume how I've configured it and it'll work. Even though technically it's a software-based solution. Yes, on Linux it's just using MD because there's some special sauce in there. It's not hardware RAID. But it's also not software RAID. Well, it is 99% software RAID, but Intel is not lying when they say that they've got stuff in the processor to help with that. And the Intel engineers have done their homework. They've got this wonderful reference, and it's like, hey, this is the kind of performance you should expect. It's nice, it's documented, so people could learn some stuff from this. This table of performance shows you what you should expect, whether you're using NVMe, say to SSD, spinning rust, the math works pretty universally. Except I'd also add that the math you do here is upper bound by the slowest device in the pool. So don't mix devices. 
Now the SSDs that I'm using in this system are Intel P4500 M.2 SSDs. Those are enterprise SSDs. And these SSDs are not great for workstations or gamers, but they are great for servers. Now with VROCK, the worst part is that it seems like the marketing people got a hold of VROCK and just segmented the heck out of it because it doesn't work the same depending on if you use Intel SSDs or Samsung SSDs because you know Samsung 970 Pros in there would be even better than the P4500s but the engineering here from Intel is pretty fabulous and I think overall the technology was ruined by the bean counters because you know is anybody even talking about VROCK anymore there's some hardware inside the CPUs as I kind of alluded to that helps accelerate the type of raid operations the CPU is asked to do as a result of this quasi mostly software solution and it makes sense but check the fine print on the Intel documentation here up to 1 million IOPS the problem now is that you can get performance like that out of a single consumer tier NVMe SSD new SSDs based around the Fison E18 microcontroller push over a million IOPS just one of them we reviewed one a Samsung's new controller on their 980 Pro can do 1.5 million IOPS on a single drive now, our performance on this W3175X is exactly what you'd expect with two Intel P4500 SSDs. Double the read IOPS for RAID 1 and double both read and write for RAID 0 using 2 to 6 NVMe. Crazy things like 6 NVMe drives it really is a lot of fun on this platform and it basically ran fine. Though I quickly ran out of PCIe lanes on this older Skylake Xeon platform because 40 is just not enough. The other component here though is latency, not just throughput. How long does it take to service a read or write request to turn it around and get it completed? With multiple drives in the mix, the overhead in the driver to figure out which drive stores the data and that kind of thing is also gonna impact how long it takes to service that read request. And if the driver is written poorly, it's gonna perform worse. Worse, you know, bad software here can be more of a bottleneck than the hardware. <laughs> and that's gonna be a haunting theme. We're gonna come back to that whole latency thing in just a second, don't worry. Speaking of poorly written drivers, let's take a look at that AMD system we started with. Buzzing. Again, it's a place of love. We can fix this. We have the technology. We literally have the technology. Open source is better. But, <laughs> but, but, but wait, before you downvote, let me explain. To set up and do this testing, we used NVMe as well as SATA SSDs. This system has six SATA SSDs, you know, relatively cheap ones. I also tested a simple NVMe RAID 0 and a simple RAID 1 with two NVMe's. The two NVMe's work decently well with AMD soft rate, so that's not really interesting. We're not gonna talk about that. It's a two or three step process to load the driver during the Windows install, which is a pain, but it does work. And it gives you a bootable RAID volume for speed, RAID 0, or redundancy for RAID 1. And this is one of our test systems on the SATA side because we had a lot of problems on the SATA side of it and we ended up building several systems beyond just this one. But here's the one and I think currently this has got the 4750G in it but we also tested the Ryzen 5800X and some other CPUs when we had problems because we weren't really sure. The results that I'm showing you today though are from either the 4750G or the 5800X um, and this system is based around the Crosshair Hero 8 from Asus, and this has got the 4750G in it. Uh, but we also tested the ASRock Tai Chi, the X570, and the B550. And the B550 actually worked a little better than the X570 because the X570 was older for SATA RAID. Uh, but I'm getting kind of ahead of it myself. So going into this, one would expect the performance of SATA RAID to be in line with that Intel table in their performance results. From that, that URL. I mean, that's just the ground truth math of it. One expects to double their read IOPS in either configuration, RAID 0 or RAID 1, with just two drives. But that doesn't really happen in my testing. Uh, initially, you know, remember we did the AMD RAID setup. And remember, AMD RAID is not the only RAID that you can do unless you need to boot off of the RAID array. And that's something that we're going to come back to because. You don't have to use AMD's RAID on, on any platform. Anyway, six drives and a stripe of three mirrors. This is the easiest way to show it. Yeah, something is seriously wrong here. The read speed is clearly not leveraging the available IOPS of the second drive in each mirror in each RAID 1 group. We've got three RAID 1 mirrors striped together in RAID 0. And we kind of saw this with the simple NVMe mirror where we have two NVMe's that are mirrored in a simple configuration. If we configure it 
to be a RAID 0 of just three drives, the Crystal Disk Smart performance is just about identical, even if we ramp all the way up to 16 threads. And by the way, for testing, we swept from one to five gigabyte test file sizes with thread counts ranging from one to 32. We did a lot of testing. It was, it was kind of mind numbing. We also ran into a problem initially testing six drives. One of the drives had a bad cable and that cable would tank performance of the whole thing because you know, remember, that's how that works. But there were no errors reported in the Windows event log or anything like that. I suspected, but I wasn't sure that the PCIe error suppression on AMD platforms, that platform first error handling, prevented the SATA errors from being logged. Switching the driver array back to an Intel system after I was having problems clued me into something was wrong with the cable or a drive or something because I could see SATA errors on that system. I could also see in Linux, because chasing this down is like, all right, let's try another operating system. I can see that one drive's read speeds were super slow. I mean, 140 megabytes per second is something is wrong because SATA is slow, but it's not that slow. And oddly, no errors were reported there on the AMD system either. But I could see error counters in smart because these are newer drives that have decent smart counters. I could see the error counters counting up. Now, in the Intel system with the cable and the same setup, I was actually seeing errors. There were useful errors that were being logged in the Linux console. So I'm not sure, but something isn't right with the error handling on the AMD side of things. When you have errors, it'll just be slower. It'll still work, but it'll be slower. So if your numbers are wildly off these numbers in this kind of an array, check your cables, double check your drives, try different SATA ports just for giggles, because there may be something weird going on. And that was something that contributed to the chaos of the benchmark in this video and uh, untold hours testing it. So thanks patrons and float plane subscribers. Now we also tested a four drive RAID 10. That's a simpler setup. It's easier to do the math. It's easier to like figure it out. And similarly, we found the performance kind of lacking with the AMD RAID drivers. The settings by default are also pretty conservative in terms of caching, but it's probably better for data protection. So we set everything to write back caching, which potentially opens the possibility of having the RAID array in an undetected inconsistent state after a power outage. When you cache the writes, you could enter the possibility where you're writing information and it makes it to one of the disks, but not the other. And so they're inconsistent after an unclean reboot. So I can't blame AMD for being a little conservative with the default cache settings. If you understand the risks and want to enable write back caching, you can do that and you do get a performance benefit for writes via the GUI. So be aware of that, be aware of that option. It doesn't help you with the reads though, because something is wrong with the reads. Another thing that doesn't make any sense to me, if we pop over to Linux and do some more comparison, we see that the speed is about the same in a RAID 10 configuration. So, okay, maybe maybe that is, maybe maybe something is, is making sense here uh, with RAID 10, with a four drive RAID 10. Uh, the numbers, you know, at the top line are close enough, it makes sense. On Linux, we're on a different and more complicated file system. So it's actually a little slower in Linux for the top line raw read performance. I mean, that's why it doesn't look as good. And the latency number is also a little higher on Linux. Again, a little bit of overhead. But the time to service a 4K read request is significantly higher. You know, 1200-ish microseconds versus 1933 microseconds. It's a pretty bit, it's, it's a good bit higher in Linux. That makes sense again with Linux's added file system overhead. But wait, the other Linux file system has almost three times the IOPS performance per second. And this is generally true sweeping from one thread to 16 threads. There's an inefficiency in AMD's driver and it's not a consistent inefficiency, it's an intermittent in inefficiency, and I can prove it. Remember how I said we'd come back to, do you need it and how it works and what's going on? Well, you don't have to use AMD's RAID drivers to get RAID, and that provides a convenient comparative for us, even on Windows, so that we can do a more apples to apples comparison. In fact, the only place where you actually have to use AMD's RAID is for a bootable RAID 0 or RAID 1 array, that's it. Otherwise, on Windows, non-bootable volumes, Windows has RAID built in, and it's basic, but serviceable. So in Windows, in manual RAID mode, with just two drives and RAID 0, our IOPS is through the roof, and our microsecond latencies are through the floor as compared with the AMD RAID driver. I mean, the Crystal Dismark numbers here, Crystal Dismark, there's really more benchmarking we should be doing other than Crystal Dismark than we did, but we don't need to get into it for the video. Of course, moving up from RAID 0 to RAID 1, we actually do get the read benefit as well. So this is already about twice the performance of the AMD RAID driver. It's a little sensationalist to say because 
It's just using the other mirror for read operations, which the AMD driver's not doing for some reason. Switching up to RAID 10, yeah, it works like you'd expect. It works like the Intel table. You, you get the performance here that you'd expect. And if you wanna do this, it's pretty easy. You just gotta go to Disk Manager and create it you know, directly here from Disk Manager. It works. And not only does it work, the performance is more in line with what you'd expect from you know, Intel's rule of thumb performance table. And also the same performance that you get from Linux's software RAID. With the AMD RAID driver, even on RAID 0, it seems like there's either an op unoptimization or overhead that limits its performance. The AMD RAID driver performs best in RAID 0, but in RAID 1 or RAID 10 configurations, they really leave a lot of performance on the table. And you don't have to use it at all, except in the case that you want a bootable RAID volume. Windows RAID doesn't really do that, at least not yet. And there's another killer landmine lurking here on the AMD software side, why you might not want to use AMD's RAID software. It's trim, yeah, trim. See, SSDs take a very, very long time to actually erase the information. The OS has to tell the drive which blocks are actually empty so that when the information comes along, there's a place to put it. Uh, old mechanical hard drives didn't have to, you could just overwrite it and it was fine, but SSDs don't work that way. Eventually, you run out of places to put stuff, even though it's been erased. So it's vitally important that trim is passed through to do that cleanup, so it knows. Well, guess what? AMD drivers still don't seem to do this. I thought this was fixed, but in my testing, nope, still broken. Some drives have the capability to snoop on the file system. The controller can look into the file system and do garbage collection, but we shouldn't rely on that. And that, that means that you have to use like a Windows file system or a file system that the SSD understands in order for it to safely do that. Uh, if you don't do that, the writes will become glacial, as we saw in our testing. 40 megabytes per second is slower than a mechanical hard drive. So if you're using an NVMe for your boot volume, you're okay, except for the whole trim thing. It works okay, but yeah, not as good as Intel VROC, but serviceable, usable mostly for that boot volume, but uh, it'd be a lot better with trim. Oh, and for VROC, it just works on Linux too. Uh, the AMD RAID software could work like that in Linux since ultimately both VROC and the Intel RAID are mostly a software RAID, 99%, but no developers have undertaken to do that with AMD's RAID solution and Intel MD multi-disc, as far as I'm aware. As AMD grows and gets more revenue, they'll be able to hire developers to tie up these loose ends, I'm sure, though. Because, you know, VROC just working out of the box on Linux is kind of a big deal, even though VROC is a little bit of hardware acceleration, but mostly software. So, for now, you're kind of stuck. You gotta avoid VROC, because it's great engineering, but the marketing people made it unusable with uh, hardware keys and segmentation and all sorts of other problems. And you wanna avoid AMD RAID because it leaves a lot of performance on the table and you don't actually need it, except unless you really want a boot volume that's mirrored that's, or striped. Those are really the only cases. Now, what about Threadripper? You might be asking, what about Megadesk? You put 28 NVMEs in that. Well, it's the same on Threadripper. You can use up to 10 NVMe in Threadripper with AMD RAID, but I can use 28 NVMe in software RAID on Linux or Windows with no problem. They're just PCIe devices. I don't need to use AMD's RAID. I don't want to. Look, if you want your disks to go faster, you might actually be better off using something like Primo Cache, which is not even RAID. It'll add the same types of microsecond latencies we saw for random I.O., but it'll boost your IOPS so your computer will feel faster. It doesn't add as much latency as you might think either. Uh, I can use it with a large Optane cache. That's how I use it on my personal Threadripper system. And it feels like I'm computing in the future. It really does because Optane is that fast. Now AMD also has Store MI, and that's useful for accelerating a mechanical hard drive with an SSD. But that isn't really an apples to apples caching thing for what I'm talking about here. Story my is not gonna get you into the, it feels like I'm computing in the future. There's also Fuse Drive, which could do that. It's decent, and that was what AMD used for Story my version one, but it's a different kind of technology for doing that. So caching is a different conversation than RAID. Um, so don't get those things mixed up, because we saw that in the, in, the, in, the, in the forum and some other comments. So there, we've had a lot of support threads on the forum for RAID, which is what led to this video, which has led to a deeper investigation. And it was some really pretty interesting stuff. So I'm Wendell, this is level one. Uh, this has been a pretty decent ramble about RAID on your motherboard and how you can still use RAID, but you probably don't need RAID support on your motherboard to do it. And it's probably better anyway. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums where you can, you know, ask questions or let me know what your experiences are with RAID or, you know, confirmation bias or argue or whatever.
I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.